is it even possible to sleep in and go to Hollywood Studios? Can you have a great day here if you don't rope drop? I think you can, and I'm gonna show you how. It's a busy day at Hollywood, but we're gonna have the best afternoon ever. Let's go. Like I said, it is an incredibly busy day here today at Hollywood Studios. Most of the attractions have well over an hour wait. Rise of the Resistance is looking at almost two hours. It's a busy, busy week right here in Disney. But is it still possible to have a lovely afternoon here in Hollywood Studios if you don't rope drop? Can you actually sleep in and still have fun? We've done this at Animal Kingdom. We've done this at Magic Kingdom, but this is the trickiest park to conquer. So let's do it. There is one asterisk on this. When I say you can sleep in, somebody still has to get up at 7 a.m. to book your first Genie Plus attraction. I did purchase Genie Plus for today. There's just so many heavy hitters here and the lines are so long to really maximize your time, especially if you're not road dropping. The best thing you can do is stack lightning lanes for the afternoon. So that's exactly what I did. I'm walking into the park with lightning lanes for Rock and Roller Coaster, Tower Terror, and Slinky Dog Dash. So excited to do that in a little bit, but for now we're gonna kick it off with some standby stuff. We'll get into Genie in a little bit. We are going to start this day in Hollywood off with one of my favorite filler attractions, and that is the Beauty and the Beast live on stage show. This show has been dazzling guests since the early 90s. It actually opened the same day that Beauty and the Beast came into theaters. Talk about really betting on yourself. Disney was like, we know this is going to be a banger, so we're dropping a new stage show the same day as the movie. And you know what? They were right. It is a banger. It's one of the best Disney movies ever. So we're going to kick this off here. The shows are available on Genie Plus for the most part, but usually you do not need to reserve a spot with a lightning lane. I'm walking in just a few minutes before showtime and there's plenty of seats available. Now, I am just one person, so it's easier for me to find a seat. If you have a bigger party or you're really particular about where you sit, wanna sit, you may wanna get here 15, 20 minutes early. I'm walking in like 10 minutes early and I'm very excited to see the show. adventure than even she and her wildest imagination could have dreamt. Probably no lie a hundred times. It's been around since the early 90s. I've been coming here since the early 90s. Beauty and the Beast is one of my favorite Disney movies. Belle's my favorite Disney princess along with Mulan. Like, I've seen that show literally a hundred times, but if I don't cry, like, I don't know the ending of the story Beauty and the Beast. Every time. Every time. Two, I know Belle's dress is beautiful, but I've always yearned for those hot pink ones. I think I, I just want one so bad. Just to, like, wear around the house. And three, if there are sign language interpreters at a show, I'm going to be watching them 70% of the time. I think they are so talented and so fascinating to watch the sign language interpreters do the show that like, congrats to you, like, shout out to you guys because you're amazing. Uh, wow, what a great way to start the day. And now it's off to our first lightning lane. Record scratch, I lied to you. We're not going to my first lightning lane quite yet because I had a few minutes to kill, so naturally I got a coffee at the Joffrey's cart behind Tower of Terror because it usually doesn't have that long of a line and pumpkin creme brulee cold brew from Joffrey's is superior in every way. But since I have a few minutes, might as well do a little Genie 101, a little recap of what I did this morning. It's not going to be a full Genie breakdown video. I'll share some tips and tricks as I go. Um, but I've got plenty of videos that fully break down Genie and are all about Genie. And I definitely recommend checking those out if you are coming to Walt Disney World. Hey, it's Molly from the future. Molly from the past is about to tell you that Genie Plus cost $15 per person per day, which it did when I made this video. Unfortunately, last week, Disney announced that Genie Plus would now cost $15 to $22 per person per day and would vary day by day like fancy ride costs. I'm dreadfully sorry to be the bearer of this terrible news, but I still wanted the video to be accurate. So, on with the show. What you need to know for this video is that Genie Plus is the $15 per person per day service that allows you to access to skip the line at over 40 attractions at all four parks. You can use it at once per attraction. There are also fancy rides which are an individual cost to skip the line there. At this park, it is Rise of the Resistance. 
When booking these attractions for Genie Plus, you can book access to the Lightning Lane, that's the expedited queue, at 7 a.m. no matter who you are. If you're a resort guest or not, 7 a.m. you can book yours. With fancy rides, resort guests can book them at 7 a.m. Non-resort guests have to wait until the time that park opens. So, this morning I got up at 7 a.m. and I booked Slinky Dog Dash. Now, when I clicked it right at 7, it showed me a morning time. We're not coming in the morning today. This is an afternoon video. So I quickly exited out and went back in and got an afternoon time. That's a risky game. That's a roll of the dice that I took. If you feel risky, you can do that too. I don't know that I recommend it if you really want to ride Slinky, but it worked out for me today. An important thing to know about Genie Plus Attractions is that you can book your second one either when you've used your first one, if your first one expires, or 120 minutes after you've booked the first one in case you book one a little bit further out. That 120 minutes kicks off as soon as the park opens, which means park opened at 8.30. At 10.30, I could book another Lightning Lane, which I did Tower of Terror later today, and at 12.30, I could book another one after that, which I booked for Rock and Roller Coaster. So I walked into the park a little bit before one o'clock with a stack of three lightning lanes ready to go. That is absolutely how I recommend handling afternoons in these parks, especially Magic Kingdom and Hollywood Studios when it is so, so busy. So like I said, you do have to get up at seven to make that happen, but it's worth it. And you can go back to sleep or go have breakfast or do what you will. And now the bad news. I'm not a resort guest, which means I wasn't eligible to try and book Rise of the Resistance until the park opened at 8.30. And unfortunately, by 8.30, all of the lightning lanes were sold out. That often happens with Rise of the Resistance. It's so incredibly popular that it usually sells out before non-resort guests get the chance to purchase it. I'm gonna continue looking to see if a Rise of the Resistance lightning lane pops up. It has on occasion. It's very, very rare. I don't have my hopes up, and the line's already about two hours. So if you are a non-resort guest coming to this park, I would recommend rope dropping because even though the line will be long first thing in the morning, it will not be as long as the two, three plus hour wait I'm seeing right now. If you are a resort guest and you do plan on coming in in the afternoon, I recommend just going ahead and biting the bullet and paying for it. I know it's a bummer that you have to pay extra for that attraction. However, if you don't want to rope drop or wait in a long line, that's kind of your only option. It's ironic that this is the third lightning lane I booked today, but it's the first one I get to use. Again, you can book one every two hours if you're using that 120 minute loophole, which meant at 1230 I was eligible for my next lightning lane. If you're ever not sure what time you're able to book another one, look at the app. They've added a feature up at the top of the tip board that says you can book your next one at X time. Set an alarm for a minute before that. That way you're always booking as soon as you can. So as I was walking into the park today, I was looking at my options. There were some pretty far out, I'm talking 7 p.m. options for things like Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, Rock and Roller Coaster, and Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run. But I fiddle faddled for a little bit, which is my term for just refreshing the tip board to see if anything new pops up. And I was able to secure a Rock and Roller Coaster for 150, which I knew would be perfect timing because I'd be going to the Beauty and the Beast show at one. Rock and Roller Coaster is incredibly popular. It currently has a 99-0 minute wait. Oh my gosh, it just jumped to 105. Yikes! So I highly recommend using either a lightning lane here or they do have single rider, which your party will be split up, but you typically get on the attraction much, much faster. If you are thinking about coming in early, this one along with Tower is a good one to rope drop, knock them out both early. Thank you. Is there another touch point up ahead? Thank you. Rock and Roller Coaster has a 48 inch height requirement, the highest inside a Disney theme park because it goes upside down, not one, not two, but three times as you listen to the musical stylings of Aerosmith. You can see that now that I've tapped in at Rock and Roller Coaster, I'm able to book now. So I'm looking at what's available. I've pinned a few attractions at the top. Mickey and Minnie, 70 minute wait, an eight o'clock lightning lane. Falcon, Millennium Falcon, uh, 50 minute wait, four o'clock lightning lane, 105 minute wait at Rise. A lot of the shows are available, of course, but I don't necessarily recommend booking those with lightning lanes. Slinky Dot Dash has an 80 minute wait and it's out of lightning lanes for the day, but I booked that one already. Star Tours is available for like right now. Toy Story Mania, 65 minute wait, five o'clock lightning lane, and Tower of Terror, no lightning lanes left, and a 70 minute wait, but I have that one booked as well. So now what I'm gonna do is fiddle faddle a little bit, refresh the screen, knowing that I have Slinky Dog Dash at two o'clock and Tower of Terror around four o'clock to see if I can get something that fits in there. I also have a very fun dining reservation that I was able to book last minute uh, around four o'clock as well, so kind of finagling.
check i do love that attraction it goes by really fast it's only like 90 seconds so if you're scared it'll be over before you know it but it's a really fun attraction and i gotta say to have your face on an attraction is like the biggest flex ever like if i was aerosmith or jimmy fallon i would never stop talking about that while waiting to board rock and roller coaster i was able to fiddle faddle a few times and pull a toy story mania for about 320 which is perfect because my slinky dog goes till 305 it was showing about 5.30 for Toy Story Mania, so glad to bump that one up. Which means I've got time to eat because as much as I hate to admit it, coffee is not a meal. I joined the walk-up dining list on the dining tip board of the My Disney Experience app. That's when you're looking at the tip board. Click over to dining. You can see all of the different restaurants. You can see if there's any reservations available, when the next mobile order window is, or if they have room on their walk-up wait list. And I'm at the Brown Derby Lounge, one of my favorite places to grab a bite and a cocktail. Um, this is the lounge side of the signature restaurant, the Brown Derby. So you can order off the entire Brown Derby menu. They also have a few lounge specialties, some small plates, and they have a fabulous bar, plus some of the best people watching in Disney World. Because say it with me, friends, it may be a busy park day. We may have a lot of rides we want to do, but we also luxuriate. Yay, my meal has arrived. This is literally one of my favorite meals on property. First of all, I have the Brown Derby Signature Old Fashioned. It's got Knob Creek Select Disney Bourbon, some bitter splash of water, a little bit of orange. Simple, classic, we love it. They do great classic cocktails here. They also, if you're interested, do a martini flight or a margarita flight if you'd like to try a few things. And this right here, friends, is the famous Cobb Salad. They use the same recipe as the original Brown Derby out in Hollywood. And a fun salad fact, did you know that the Cobb Salad actually originated at the original Hollywood Brown Derby out in Hollywood in the 30s. A guest came into the restaurant late at night and asked the owner and the chef if they could make them something. However, they'd recently had dental work done. So the chef went into the back, figured out what they had on hand, avocados, lettuce, tomato, bacon, chopped it up real fine so the guests could eat it. The name of that restaurateur, Bob Cobb. You can't make this up. So that is the history and origin of the Cobb salad. And now it's one of my favorite meals in Walt Disney World. Mm. I know you're like, Molly, it's just a salad, but it's an awesome salad. This French dressing is light and zesty, adds a little bit of acidity. It's all chopped up so nicely. I love blue cheese, so I love the kind of earthiness that that brings. A little freshness from the tomato and the avocado. You can add grilled chicken or grilled shrimp, but honestly, the way it is, is perfect for me. Wash it down. My favorite cocktail. This is one of the best in Disney. And this is how you luxuriate. Y'all, y'all, good things come to those who luxuriate. I'm gonna do a dramatic reenactment of what just happened because it happened so fast, I didn't have time to record the whole thing. Me, looking at my phone, eating my salad, dropping my fork, staring at my phone, and booking a Rise of the Resistance lightning lane that popped up. <gasps> I, was just ha I was just looking at it. I was looking at the tip board, checking in. I've been checking in every few minutes to see if Rise has come back, and it did, and I snagged one. Good things come to those in the eh? It doesn't happen often that they pop back up, but this goes to show it's not impossible. I still think if you're a resort guest, you should be booking it at 7 a.m. If you're not a resort guest, you should be checking at 8.30. And I've just been checking every 10 minutes or so, and I happened to check at the right time, and they were back. I grabbed it. They're already gone again, so don't lose hope, but be adamant in your checking and still look right when the park opens. What a fabulous lunch. I truly can't think of anything better than a Cobb salad, an old fashioned, and a Rise Lightning Lane. That's the trifecta right there, friends. But now it is time to head over to Toy Story Land where I have been able to secure both major attractions there. Slinky Dog Dash, remember I booked it right at 7 a.m. And Toy Story Mania I booked just a little bit ago. So excited to head to Andy's backyard. Hey, howdy, hey, we made it to Toy Story Land where I can see them working on Woody's Roundup Rodeo Barbecue. That's the barbecue restaurant that is supposed to open this year, themed to Toy Story. You know, I'll be there whenever I can be at Roundup Rodeo Barbecue. I'm always excited to try a new restaurant. I'm always excited when things are Toy Story themed. I don't love 
barbecue. It's not my favorite food. And there's a lot of barbecue restaurants already in Walt Disney World. You've got Polite Pig, which I would consider the number one. Uh, you've got Flame Tree Barbecue. You've got Regal Eagle. So I just don't know that another barbecue spot is, is the answer, but reserving judgment till I see it and I'm sure it'll be very cute no matter what. The Lightning Lane is a little backed up here at Slinky Dog Dash, which is my time to remind you to pack your patient pants and that the Lightning Lane doesn't necessarily mean walk on. It just means expedited and significantly less than the standby entrance, which is currently 120 minutes, two hours. I am very confident we will get on this in just a few minutes. So just wanted to remind people of that. Additionally, Slinky Dog Dash has a 38 inch height requirement, but it has a little bit more bark than it looks like. And yes, I will make that pun every time I talk about Slinky Dog Dash from here until eternity. It is such a cute attraction. It's a great family coaster. I think it's a ton of fun, but I understand if you don't want to wait two hours for it, I wouldn't either. So if you are not going to book a lightning lane for it, I would rope drop it or come early as a resort guest, especially, or come last thing at night jump in line right before the park closes, especially because this attraction looks beautiful in the evening. There is so much cute detail in this land and at this attraction. Like, for example, if you look at Rex's box over here, first of all, you see how scary Rex is supposed to be. I think we all know that's not true. Second of all, if you look at that price tag, it's 11 1995 That's because Toy Story debuted in theaters on November 22nd, 1995. The whole thing is made of different toys and boards and boxes. I did a whole video on the best kept secrets of the most popular rides here in Hollywood Studios. We can link that for you. We can do more of those style videos. I love all the details in these parks, especially in this land based on my favorite Pixar movie. That attraction is just so fun, so adorable. I know it has a really long line and I don't recommend standing in it, so make sure you take appropriate actions to avoid that. Also, I got to ride in the back row, which is my favorite ride on 99% of roller coasters, especially on this one, because you get to be really close to Slinky Dog's Slinky Tail, which is so cute, I could cry. Time to go to Toy Story Mania. Then we're gonna scoot over to Galaxy's Edge to do Rise of the Resistance. And then we're gonna go to a super special secret location I've yet to reveal, but I'm very excited to go to for the first time with the Mam Fam. Toy Story Mania is a family shooter style game, 3D. You're gonna be playing with your Toy Story friends like Woody, Buzz, Ham, Rex. And I love this attraction. One, it's a great family attraction. There's not a ton of family rides in this park. Two, it's fun no matter how many times you ride it because you can always try to better your score. Love to bet my friends and family on who's gonna win. So it's just a really great salad attraction. Now this one, unlike Slinky Dog, will wane and ebb a little bit more as far as the weight goes. Sometimes on really busy days, you'll see it lower under 45 minutes. Sometimes though, you'll see it well over an hour. So it's not a top priority with Genie Plus. However, it's a nice to do with Genie Plus. It's kind of a second tier priority, definitely behind things like Slinky Dog Dash, Tower of Terror, Smuggler's Run. Those are more of your priority here. However, if you can book this one, why not? Couple of pro tips to help you absolutely destroy your friends and family. In the first room on the farm, try to hit the rat that runs around the barn. It'll flip the barn open and a bunch of different uh, high scoring targets will be there. In the volcano room with the dinosaurs, hit all of the squiggly lava balloons and the volcano will erupt. You're gonna have to use teamwork on this next one in the room with the toy soldiers. They're gonna be throwing plates up. You and your partner need to both hit those plates as they're in the sky. It'll bring a cannon out. And when you get to the room with my main man, Buzz, try and get all of the rings on the aliens that are in the center. And if you get them all down at the same time, a monster will open whose mouth is worth a bunch of points. Toy Story Land. Goodbye, Buzz. I love you. Gotta go see my other space boyfriend, though, because it's time to head to Galaxy's Edge and go to Rise of the Resistance. 
Welcome to Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. We are here on the planet of Batu, where you can pilot the fastest hunk of junk in the galaxy at Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run. Join a battle between the First Order and the Resistance at Rise of the Resistance. You can enjoy a delicious Ronto wrap or Katsaka's Outpost mix. You can go shopping, you can build a lightsaber or a droid. There is a lot to do in this land, especially if you're a diehard Star Wars fan. But I don't think you have to be. In fact, sometimes I think being a more casual Star Wars fan actually lets you look at this land with more excited eyes. Because I know a lot of Star Wars fans were upset that they didn't build a Tatooine or a place that's actually in the films. This is kind of adjacent to things you see in the films. And if you're hoping for that, like, walking into Diagon Alley Harry Potter experience where you walk into scenes you saw in the movies or read about in the books, you're getting kind of like things that might have happened off screen. As a casual Star Wars fan, I quite enjoy it. I think the details in this land are amazing. I think Rise of the Resistance is the best attraction that's ever been built anywhere, at least the best one I've ever been on. I quite like a lot of the food around here, so I personally enjoy it, but let me know what you think down in the comments. Rise of the Resistance is the most popular ride in all of Walt Disney World. Currently has a 90 minute wait right now, which is the lowest I've seen it all day. It was up to 140 minutes earlier when I looked at the app. You're good. You're good. Thank you. Like I said earlier, Rise of the Resistance is a fancy ride, properly known as an individual lightning lane, which means it's an additional single ride cost per person not associated with Genie Plus. It was $15 today, which I understand is very, very steep, especially if you've got multiple people in your party. So you kind of have to decide, is $15 per person worth not waiting in a 90 or 120 minute line. And if you don't want to spend that money, then you probably do need to rope drop this park. Especially as a resort guest, you can get in 30 minutes early, get here very early for that, jump in line. As a non-resort guest, get here as early as you can, jump in line, it'll likely be shorter than it is the rest of the day. The other time you could try and ride this attraction without purchasing a lightning lane is the last thing at night. You can jump into the queue of any attraction just a few minutes before the park closes and they'll let you ride. Even if the wait time is still an hour or two, you can spend that wait after the park's closed so you're not missing out on key park time. The risky part of that advice with this attraction specifically is it has a lot of downtimes. It has a lot of technical issues. So I'd hate for you to wait all day for only for it to be closed in the evening. So you kind of got to figure it out but I promise it's worth all the hassle. Rise of the Resistance has a 40 inch height requirement and it is a full experience. Multiple ride vehicles, big, huge practical sets, and it puts you in between a battle with the First Order and the Resistance. There's nothing else like it, I promise. The it with words how amazing and immersive that experience is and as someone who's been lucky enough to do it many many times it still blows me away the technology the scale but one thing that makes it extra special are when you get really good cast members the cast members we just had were so into it and they were so into making the guest experience like just perfect and they were urgent and they're like, come on guys we're here in the resistance we're gonna say and like they were just like perfect so thank you to those cast members you guys made my day like as we were going they're like good luck may the force be with you like cast members i love you wow now it's been a minute since we've had a feeding or a snack relaxation luxuriation break so we're headed to somewhere very exciting and luckily we don't have to go too far because it's in this land i bet you know where we're going Ruh-roh. stormtroopers are out patrolling 
I hope they don't see me. I'm gonna try and sneak by because while I may be a Slytherin in an alternate universe, I'm also Team Poe Dameron in this one. If you guessed we were headed to Oga's Cantina, you are right. Oga's Cantina is the local watering hole here. It's similar to the Mos Eisley's Cantina in A New Hope, and it's an incredibly hard reservation to get. I don't know how, I don't know why, the force must have been with me, but literally this morning, as I was prepping for this video, booking for some lightning lanes, I decided to look and see if Oga's had anything. It said no, but I fiddle-faddled around with the times a little bit, and a spot opened up. So, obviously I booked it. This is the best afternoon. Now, Oka's Cantina, if you'd like to visit, should be one you prioritize as soon as you're able to book dining reservations 60 days out from your vacation. However, never lose hope, never tell you the odds, because you can still pull them. The closer it gets, the more people that want to avoid the cancellation fees. Uh, so there may be some available the day before or the day of, like today. Also, fiddle-faddle between the times. Don't just let it select lunch or dinner. Actually click into the different hours when you're looking at dining reservations, and sometimes something will pop up. Now, even though Oga's is a cantina and they do serve alcohol anyone is welcome to go there's no age limit and they do have some specialty non-alcoholic beverages as well as well as some snacks now the food is not my favorite here i don't really recommend any of the uh food that Oga has on the menu but i do think the drinks are really fun and it's a kitschy exciting experience to do at least once the best part of Oga's cantina in my opinion is the dj DJ Rex, you may recognize him. He used to be the pilot on Star Tours, the original version of that attraction, but uh, he wasn't great at being a pilot, so now he's spinning the beats across the galaxy and he makes this venue. Unlike with Genie Plus and Fettle Faddling for Lightning Lanes, which is the same for up to 10 guests, being a single guest definitely helped me be able to secure a spot in Oga's uh, last minute. So again, I definitely recommend if you want to come visit here, booking as soon as possible, continually checking back. Additionally, one of the coolest things you can do at Hollywood Studios is they keep Oga's open after the park. So if you book a really late reservation here, you can actually leave and take pictures with a basically empty Galaxy's Edge, a basically empty Millennium Falcon. Don't diddle daddle too much because the cast members want to go home, but that's a very cool experience if you're especially a Star Wars fan. Oga's Cantina serves a variety of concoctions, including things that make your mouth numb, that feature dry ice, buzz buttons, all kinds of fun and elaborate tricks. They also, again, have specialty non-alcoholic beverages if you don't drink or you've got someone under 21, as well as a few snacks. Don't get the charcuterie board. You're welcome. A few important things to know if you are going to visit Oga's Cantina. Number one, the drinks are all pre-made. So you cannot come in here and order something like a Jack and Coke. They cannot substitute ingredients on the drinks. It is just what's on their limited menu. But if you're not a cocktail drinker, they do have some exclusive beers for Galaxy's Edge in here, which is very fun and one of my favorite things to get. You should also know that there is typically a 45-minute time limit on your visit to Oga's Cantina. It's very popular, very small. They want to get as many people as they can into the cantina. You can buy as much as you want in that 45 minutes, but there is a time limit. Additionally, it's 95% standing, so this is not a lounge where you're likely going to be able to sit down, and most of the tables or spaces are shared, so you're going to be up against strangers in the bar. You're going to be up against strangers at these long bar tables. If that doesn't sound like an environment that you would enjoy, just letting you know now, I personally think Oka's is so fun because it's like half galactic cantina, half uh, dive bar. It's got kind of a college bar feel, especially when the bartenders get really into DJ Rex's music. And I'm glad the full party environment is finally back as it was way diminished when the parks reopened. Now you may know I do not like sweet drinks, but I will make an exception for a fuzzy tauntaun. It's peach vodka, peach schnapps, simply orange tangerine sugar, and buzz button tingling foam. So it turns your mouth numb when you drink it. In fact, not for human consumption, but the bartender said because I had four ears, I clearly wasn't a human anyway. Cheers. This is my number one drink recommendation at Oka's Cantina. Yes, it's gimmicky, but everything in here is gimmicky. It's definitely sweet, but it's not super over the top artificial fruit sweet. I think that's because of the orange juice. I also really like the jet juice, which is bourbon and chili. I really like several of the beers here. They have blue wine, so definitely some unusual cocktails. I don't come in here, though, for the drinks themselves. You come in here for the atmosphere. Left Oga's and I've run into trouble, it seems. The 
First Order may require your service. Okay. Are you prepared to join? No. The resistance will be crushed and forgotten. Uh, I don't think they will. Fight no. With them. So will you. Oh, gosh. You're very threatening. We are finished here. Okay. You have a good day. I, I will. Bye. Yeah. Like, thank God. I, thank goodness I had that cocktail. It was a lot less scary being interrogated by Kylo Ren thanks to my fuzzy tea. Huh? I do love that the characters are free roaming again. It really brings this land to life. You might see Kylo and the Stormtroopers. You might see Rey or Chewie. And they kind of just, they don't have formal meet and greets the way a lot of characters do in Disney World. They just kind of roam about the land as if they exist in the land. This has certainly been a very excellent and wonderful perfect afternoon in Hollywood Studios, but I've got one more lightning lane I'm going to cash in, and that's back down sunset at the Tower of Terror. Doing a final wait time update for the day. It's about 5 o'clock. Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway says 60 minutes, no lightning lanes. Alien Swirling Saucers, 55 minute wait. There are some lightning lanes. Most of the shows are done for the day, except for Frozen Ever After. That is one you could save till later in the day. Make sure to prioritize Beauty and the Beast and Indiana Jones if you'd like to see some of the shows. 60 minutes at Smuggler's Run, no lightning lanes. 75 minutes at Rock and Roller Coaster, no lightning lanes. 90 minutes at Slinky Dog, no lightning lanes. Only a 10 minute wait over at Star Tours. Rise of the Resistance is temporarily closed. However, more lightning lanes have popped up for purchase. Toy Story Mania, 60 minutes. 820 lightning lane 50 minutes at tower of terror no lightning lanes now that's without any fiddle faddling so you may be able to get some of those things to pop back up as a reminder tower of terror is the second lightning lane i booked this morning at 10 30 and i'm just now riding it like seven hours later uh which just goes to show you that you can have a lovely afternoon. You can stack the afternoon in your favor. You can avoid a lot of these long lines. It just takes understanding how Genie Plus works, and it does take getting up and booking those Genie Plus lightning lanes so that you have a stack to begin with. One thing I will say about Hollywood Studio these days is it does tend to empty out a little bit as the evening wears on. People especially hop over to Epcot for eating, drinking, festivals, harmonious, while there's not Phantasmic going on. When Phantasmic comes back, things could be a little bit different, but as of now, there's not a real nighttime spectacular here, so the park tends to empty out about an hour or two before close. Tower of Terror, one of the most popular and beloved rides in all of Walt Disney World. Thank you. Thank you. It has a 40 inch height requirement, and it's themed after the Twilight Zone. This is that drop elevator that plummets you down 200 feet or 13 stories as you visit the Twilight Zone. A fun fact about the Tower of Terror is it was actually struck by lightning when they were building it. Not interesting or ominous, however you want to look at that. But again, that secrets video I did has a ton more secrets and there are a lot to share about this attraction, especially if you're a Twilight Zone series fan. I adore the lobby. This is my favorite part of the attraction. Is that weird? best rides on Tower of Terror I've had in recent history. Not because of the attraction, which is great, uh, but because one, all the other guests in the elevator were like screaming and super into it and high energy and everybody was like clapping and all excited. And it was really fun in there. And two, we had just had the most wonderful cast member, Mike. He was so in theme. He was telling hilarious jokes before getting on the elevator. When the elevator doors uh, closed, everybody waved and were like, bye Mike. And then he meet, he met us at the exit and said hello to everybody again like mike kudos to you man i just submitted a cast compliment for him which is a super easy thing you can do on the app i love that they made it so easy if you go to the hamburger menu you can scroll down to cast compliment uh put in what that cast member did there's some pre-filled out responses just pick the one that applies pick where they were try and remember their name it says it's optional 
but try and remember their name um, and the date of your interaction and that cast member will get notified by their leader that someone left them a compliment. So if the cast member makes your day the way Mike just made mine, make sure you tell them thank you. You know what? I don't think it's going to get any better than that. In just five hours, coming into the park late, not rope dropping, I was able to do five of the most popular attractions in Disney World, including Rise of the Resistance. I saw the Beauty and the Beast show. I had some of my favorite eat snacks. It was a really, truly a perfect best afternoon scenario. So what have we learned? You can, in fact, come into the park later in the day. Now, you do still have to repair. You still have to prioritize what you'd like to do throughout the day. Be aware that things like characters and shows do stop earlier than the park closes. So if those are things you'd like to do, make sure you know their show times. Make sure you know what time those things end. To really maximize an afternoon, the best way to do it is stack those lightning lanes. So someone is going to have to get up at 7 a.m., start booking those. Make sure you book them every two hours. Fiddle faddle to get things that you'd like throughout the day. If I were to be continuing on throughout the day, I'd be booking Mickey Minnie's Runaway Railway and other things to just continue using that Genie Plus. For Rise of the Resistance, if you are a resort guest and you'd like to come in later in the day, it's best to lock in purchasing that Lightning Lane. I know it's a lot to stomach when you have to buy Genie Plus and Lightning Lanes and everything else. I know it's especially worse when you're not just a single person and those costs add up quick. But if you truly want to come in in the afternoon and not have to worry about getting here at Rope Drop, that is the best way to reserve a time. Otherwise, jump in line right before the end of the night. Hope that it doesn't go down. If you're not a resort guest, certainly check when the park opens. Typically it's 8.30. Otherwise, keep checking back throughout the day. And there, I've seen it pop up twice now today. So you certainly can get lucky, Evie, on a really busy day. Let us know what other videos you want to see. In the meantime, friends, make sure to rate, review, subscribe to our channel, follow us on social media. And until next time, friends, I'm Molly, and it's been magical. Now go watch Secrets of Hollywood Studios. Bye!